Hello everyone, and welcome back to the series of lectures on CH activation. In the previous learning materials, we covered the main definitions of CH activation and discussed the factors controlling the reactivity of CH bonds and the selectivity of CH transformations. In this lecture, I will summarize the main mechanisms of CH bond cleavage enabled by transition metals. Most transition metals are capable of activating and cleaving CH bonds through one of the mechanisms I am going to describe. Here, I will show you only the stage of CH bond cleavage. Later, complete mechanisms on representative examples will be discussed so you can see the full catalytic cycles. The following three mechanisms are typical for the activation of CH bonds in all three hybridization states of carbon. The first mechanism is based on the oxidative addition of the metal to the CH bond. This type of CH activation is common for late transition metals in their low oxidation state. The second mechanism of CH activation is based on sigma bond metathesis, common for early transition metals. The next mechanism shares some similarities with enzymatic CH activations occurring in nature and is based on photoredox catalysis. In this case, the catalyst being activated by light abstracts electrons from the substrate or donates electrons to the substrate, generating radicals cations, or other reactive intermediates that further undergo coupling reactions. The main catalysts in this case are based on iridium and ruthenium. Moreover, transition metals are known to greatly facilitate the selective CH insertions of carbons and nitrines. This chemistry works well with late transition metals, including iron, rhodium, and ruthenium. The following two mechanisms are typical for the activation of sp2 hybridized CH bonds. For instance, CH activation can occur via hectype insertion followed by a beta hydride elimination. This mechanism is typical for rhodium, palladium, and copper. The final mechanism of CH activation shares some similarities with electrophilic aromatic substitution and is known by the name concerted methylation deprotonation. It can also operate for some sp3 hybridized CH bonds. This mechanism is typical for late transition metals in their high oxidation states and it works well for electron-rich aromatic systems. Now, let's delve into specific examples, starting with CH activation through the oxidative addition of the metal to the CH bond. This mechanism is typical for late transition metals in their low oxidation states. For instance, if you encounter a CH transformation catalyzed by iridium-1 or rhodium-1 complexes, it's likely that the reaction proceeds via the oxidative addition of the catalyst to the CH bond generating iridium-3 or rhodium-3 intermediates. These intermediates, through subsequent elementary reactions, will lead to the formation of the product resulting from CH activation. As an example, let's consider the iridium-catalyzed CH alkylation of urea derivatives. In this reaction, the amide acts as a directing group, guiding iridium-1 to the nearest CH bond. The oxidative addition of iridium-1 to the CH bond generates an iridium-3 cyclometallated intermediate, which undergoes a syn insertion into the olefin, generating this intermediate. The final stage of the process is reductive elimination, which, upon hydrolysis, produces the product and regenerates the active catalyst, iridium-1. The next example is the rhodium-catalyzed silylation of aromatic compounds, published in 2008. The mechanism is quite similar to the previous one. A ligand substitution reaction occurs at rhodium, accompanied by the cleavage of the silicon-silicon bond. The formed rhodium-1 intermediate, after coordination to the directing group, undergoes oxidative addition to the CH bond, generating this rhodium-3 intermediate. The final stage of the catalytic cycle is reductive elimination, producing the product and regenerating the active catalyst, rhodium-1. The next mechanism is CH activation via sigma bond metathesis. Whenever you encounter a CH transformation catalyzed by early transition metals, you should think about sigma bond metathesis. As an example, I want to show you the yttrium-catalyzed alkylation of aniline derivatives, published in 2016. Before we delve into the mechanism, I want to offer a word of caution. This will perhaps be the most challenging part of today's lecture. Here we go. In the first step of the process, the triple carbocation displaces one of the sigma-bonded ligands of yttrium, generating the active catalyst. This active catalyst initially coordinates to the nitrogen of the substrate, followed by CH bond cleavage via sigma bond metathesis. Subsequently, an olefin coordinates to the generated complex, initiating a hectype insertion through a process quite similar to sigma bond metathesis. Next, the generated intermediate undergoes ligand substitution with another molecule of aniline, resulting in this intermediate. 
The final stage of the process involves the CH bond cleavage of the newly coordinated substrate via another sigma bond metathesis, leading to the formation of the product and the active catalyst, now possessing another substrate. The following mechanism is CH activation via photoredox catalysis. These processes are mostly radical, so whenever you encounter iridium bipyridine or ruthenium bipyridine complexes, you should think about photoredox catalysis. Let's consider the first example, the ruthenium and cobalt co-catalyzed intramolecular thiolation of RNs published in 2015. The initial step of the process is the deprotonation of the thioamide followed by a single electron transfer from the substrate to the photoactivated ruthenium catalyst, generating the following radical. The sulfur-centered radical attacks the aromatic ring, producing a more stable radical, which undergoes a one-electron oxidation by the cobalt catalyst, forming a cationic intermediate. The final stage of the process is the elimination of a proton, producing the benzothiazole. The eliminated proton oxidizes the reduced cobalt-1 to the active cobalt-3, generating hydrogen gas. Overall, we have three single electron transfer processes and two interconnected catalytic cycles. The next example is an iridium-catalyzed intramolecular amination of the benzylic CH bond with inhalogenated tosylates, published in 2015. In this case, the photoactivated iridium-3 catalyst donates an electron to the substrate, generating this incentered radical. The radical abstracts a hydrogen atom from the benzylic position, creating a more stable benzylic carbon-centered radical. In the next stage of the process, the formed radical undergoes a one-electron oxidation by an iridium-4 intermediate, regenerating the active photocatalyst and producing a benzylic carbocation. This carbocation undergoes intramolecular coupling with the amide, forming the product and releasing a proton. In this example, the activated photocatalyst donates an electron to the substrate, while in the previous example, the activated photocatalyst took an electron from the substrate to initiate the reaction. Both processes are possible, and the outcome depends on the substrate and reaction conditions. CH transformations occurring in nature are mostly radical processes and share some similarities with CH activations by photoredox catalysis. Notably, in nature, CH activations are catalyzed by metalloenzymes, particularly by cytochromes located in our livers. For instance, one can observe the couplings of phenols, anilines, and their derivatives catalyzed by cytochromes. Initially, the enzyme abstracts an electron and a proton from the substrate, which can then undergo a number of selective radical couplings, forming carbon-carbon or carbon-heteroatom bonds. The selectivity of these processes is determined by the enzyme. In contrast to photoredox catalysis, enzymes typically do not require a source of light for these transformations. Now, let's consider the CH insertion of carbons and nitrines. Whenever you encounter azides or diazo compounds combined with late transition metals, you should think about the CH insertion of carbons and nitrines. The first example is an iron-catalyzed intramolecular CH amination of RNs by corresponding azides, published in 2016. The reaction was conducted under microwave irradiation, typical for diazotization reactions. In the first stage of the process, the substrate loses nitrogen and forms an iron-nitrine complex. It is proposed that the formed complex undergoes several electron shifts, as shown here, forming the carbazole and the active form of the catalyst. The next example is an iron-catalyzed intramolecular allylic alkylation with diazo compounds. Initially, the substrate loses nitrogen, accompanied by the formation of the corresponding iron-carbene complex. In contrast to the previous example, in this case, electron shifts produce intermediate radicals that eventually undergo intramolecular radical coupling, yielding the product and regenerating the active catalyst. Siege activation via hectype insertion is less studied and is debatable. However, whenever you encounter a late transition metal catalyzed CH activation of a five membered heterocycle with low resonance energy, such as furans, you should consider the possibility of this mechanism. This mechanism was proposed for the palladium-catalyzed CH aerylation of furans possessing an electron withdrawing group. According to the proposed mechanism, the reaction starts with the oxidative addition of palladium-0 to the aryl halide, generating the corresponding palladium-2 complex. Further, this complex undergoes a hectype insertion into furan, followed by beta-hydride elimination to generate the product and a palladium-2 hydride intermediate. The active catalyst is regenerated by the reductive elimination of hydrobromic acid, which is trapped by the base. 
Now let's consider the last mechanism, CH activation via concerted metallation deprotonation. This mechanism is typical for late transition metals in their high oxidation states. Therefore, whenever you encounter ruthenium-2, rhodium-3, iridium-3, or palladium-2 complexes combined with bases like acetate or carbonate, you should think about this mechanism. The first example is the iridium-catalyzed CH amination of RNs published in 2015. Before I show you the mechanism, pay attention to the reagents used by the authors. They employed iridium-3 as a catalyst, a silver salt, and copper pyvolate. The silver salt serves multiple roles in this process. Firstly, it removes chlorides from iridium, forming the active catalyst, and it can also act as an oxidant. The active form of the catalyst coordinates to the directing group and undergoes a concerted metallation deprotonation sequence, forming the cyclometallated intermediate shown here. The formed intermediate undergoes a ligand substitution involving the amine, followed by the double oxidation of the system by silver, generating a nitran complex of iridium-5, as shown here. This is followed by reductive elimination and protonolysis, leading to the product and the regeneration of the active catalyst. The final example for today is the ruthenium-catalyzed CH olefination of Arens, published in 2012. In this case, as well, the initial step of the process involves silver-mediated formation of the active form of the catalyst through the substitution of chlorides by acetates. The active form of ruthenium-2 first coordinates to the substrate, followed by a concerted metallation deprotonation sequence forming this cyclometallated intermediate. The next step of the process includes a hectype insertion, followed by beta-hydride elimination, generating the product. The active catalyst is reproduced through a sequence of reductive elimination followed by the oxidative regeneration of the ruthenium-2 catalyst, enabled by copper-2 acetate. To sum it up, in this lecture, we have learned the main mechanisms of CH bond cleavage initiated by transition metals. Accordingly, CH activation can occur via oxidative addition to the metal, sigma bond metathesis, photoredox catalysis, hectype additions, and a concerted metallation deprotonation sequence. In the next lecture, we will concentrate on the modern developments in CH activation. Thank you for your attention.